Hi guys, this is Dr. Kusuma from Surya Plastic Surgery. So, you know, yesterday I do a lot of comprehensive facial rejuvenation surgery in my practice. I met a patient yesterday uh, who uh, came for their her pre-op appointment and essentially told me that a friend of hers had gone to a different surgeon um, and uh, was told that uh, she was going to undergo a deep plane facelift surgery, which was told to her that is the latest and greatest technique and the best thing available out there. And this essentially triggered a response, which is this video. I want to explain the differences between deep plane facelift and a SMAS or a muscle lift, which, because these terms are used very loosely in the market. So I wanted to kind of give some factual, what I feel is credible, good information to you guys so you understand the differences properly. I also want to tell you that deep plane facelift and SMAS lifts have been around for a very long time. It is not new, it is not the latest, but these techniques have been around for a long time. It's just that some surgeons have adopted one way, other surgeons have adopted other ways. Some surgeons use both depending on the situation. And so there's a lot of new things that are always coming out. These are new devices, new this, new that. But as far as technique is concerned, Deep plane facelift, SMAS or muscle lifts have been around for a very, very long time. And we all trained in all of those techniques. And I want to make sure that you guys don't uh, associate these things with uh, newness or greatest or whatever. The newness and greatest really has to do with the, with the surgeon performing the surgery because a good surgeon should be able to get a good outcome utilizing the best technique for that particular patient sitting in front of the surgeon. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize with this video. Thank you. For, you know, just a very, very simple, high level explanation for your understanding, we can classify facelift surgery actually more aptly referred to as lower face and neck surgery, not a facelift because face can include the forehead area, the eyes, the inner cheeks, the lips, and everything else. So generally, when people talk about deep plane or facelift in general, they're really talking about the, what we call the lower face, which kind of essentially is from here, maybe up to here, all this area here, and all of the neck area. That's generally referred to as a facelift surgery. I try to use the term lower face and neck surgery because that's very descriptive versus calling it generally a facelift because this will not address the forehead, this will not address the eyes, this will not address the inner cheeks, this will not address the mouth so much, okay? So that's important for you guys to know. So there are generally three classes or classifications of facelift surgery. One is called SMAS, okay, SMAS lift in the facelift category. Okay, so SMAS lift. The second one is skin only. All right, and the third one, you can call it deep plane. And this is what I want to generally explain, okay? So if I were to draw a face, which I'm gonna draw, okay, If I were to draw a crude face kind of like that, and this is the area we're looking at it from the side, okay? The eye is going to be here, obviously, right? So if you were to look at this face, the incision typically goes right on top of the ear. I'm just going to, for demonstration purposes, showing this. This area is what will be dissected, right? All of this area. Deep to this area is going to be another layer called the SMAS layer. Okay, so I hope you guys follow me. So this orange surface is the skin and underneath the orange like you're seeing through is the green layer which is called the SMAS layer. So I'm going to write here SMAS and I'm going to write here skin. Okay, so it's easy to understand now, right? If you do a skin only surgery, you'd only elevate the orange area on top of the SMAS, so you don't touch it, you elevate that orange area, you pull it back, you pull it back, and you stitch it up. That's called uh, skin-only surgery, okay? So that's skin-only surgery. 
if you do a SMAS lift, what you do is that you do the skin elevation all the way up to wherever you want to go, however far you want to go, okay? And then you separately work on the SMAS here, deep to it, which is called the muscle layer or the SMAS layer. You would also elevate this deep to the skin before you do anything to the skin. So all you're doing in this is a first elevating the skin as much as you need to, to identify the entire SMAS or the muscle layer. In this layer, you would then, some people, you know, what we call plicate it to lift it all up in the you know, direction that you want to go. Some people cut it and pull it back. Some people pull it back to the next. So there's variations of that. And so this is the SMAS lift essentially. So the skin is elevated, the deeper muscle layers identified, then it's pulled back up also that kind of drags with it the jowls, drags with it some of the fat compartments and push, push it up, pushes it up where it needs to and you stitch it. And you stitch it where you need to and anchor it. Like for example, if there's all of this SMAS layer here, you can stitch it maybe high here and roll it up. Okay, that's the SMAS lift. The next one is really So that's the SMAS, okay? I'll use this. The next one is the deep plane facelift, right? Deep plane facelift, essentially, if I were to draw the same things over again, the same skin, just for demonstration purposes, and then you have the SMAS layer deep to it in the green. So I'm going to write again SMAS. And then the skin here. In the deep plane face, essentially what you do is that you make your normal incision and then you go deep in one, what we call plane, that's why it's called plane. You don't elevate the skin separately. You basically go underneath the SMAS directly. So now you have thicker tissue that you're elevating directly, you know, as far as people want to go. And then you pull all of it as a unit back. I hope that's clear to you guys. So the first one is skin only, where you only elevate the skin, you leave the deeper surface of the smaz or the muscle layer alone, you pull the skin back and you stitch it up. And in addition, several people dissect different degrees of areas. You know, some people only dissect a tiny little bit, some people go a little bit further, some people go even further. And it depends on the comfort level of the surgeon, their training, their aggressiveness or thoroughness of surgery, and all of this is variable. That's why it's very hard to standardize these operations. It's very, very hard to know. So once that's elevated, you know, in the, in the deep plane phase, essentially you would do something similar of various degrees of dissection, but you elevate the SMAS and the skin together. You don't separate them like you do in the SMAS lift, okay? And that's important to know because you know, that is what is generally referred to as a deep plane facelift. And you can ask why is one done versus the other? Well, one reason is that people feel, some surgeons feel that, you know, the skin has better blood supply if you do it in that fashion. So there's less likelihood of having skin or incisional complications. Other surgeons feel that, you know, there's a higher risk of injury to facial nerve, which is the nerve that moves the face because you're very deep underneath the muscle layer to do this kind of stuff. So some people don't do that for that reason. Many other surgeons, and there's been plenty of literature or publications out there that show that there's not much of an advantage to doing a deep plane versus a smash lift at all if you evaluate patients after a few months. So people have just abandoned it and don't do it anymore. So the most common surgery that's done these days is the SMAS surgery more than likely, of course. This is what I think is happening out there, talking to several surgeons or colleagues of mine. A few people may still do this, and I don't know what criteria are used to decide this versus that, because essentially there is not much of a difference between the SMAS lift and outcomes and deep plane and outcome. It just depends on how well the surgery was done in either case. This one is rarely done anymore. In very, very good, experienced surgeons, hardly anybody does skin only anymore. So you can essentially eliminate that. So any good facial surgeon these days probably will do this comprehensively. Some people may do this. I'm not sure, but I just want to make sure you guys understand the differences between the two. Okay. Another advantage, in my opinion, of doing the SMAS versus this is that since you're elevating the skin separately from the deep muscle layer, you can actually move the tissues in different directions. So for example, 
if you pull the skin in a vertical direction, it's going to cause some changes to the mouth or some puckering around the hairline or whatever. So you have now the freedom to treat the two different layers separately, right? If you treat the deeper layers, you can elevate the deeper layers high this way, you can move the skin this way. So it can be done in different, what we call vectors or planes of pull. So you make things look more natural. It gives you more flexibility. If you do the deep plane, you may not have the flexibility as, as another choice, okay? And if you do surgery, okay, in a very atraumatic, minimally destructive, very clean way, the blood supply to the skin is very robust if you elevate the skin separately and there's not that much worry. And in my case, I've been doing spasmless for a very long time and skin heals beautifully and has never had a problem. So I like flexibility, I like options. So in my practice, I mostly do this because I really don't find much of an advantage in doing a deep plane facelift on anybody. Uh, if there's somebody that comes across that I find an advantage, of course I'll offer it because I'm comfortably, very perfectly comfortable doing it, but I just don't see a need to do that this day and age. So I hope this is clear to you guys. Uh, and if there's any questions, please direct message us or call the office and we'll be happy to go over this with you uh, uh, in more detail. In summary, I just explained to you guys the differences between what is called a SMAS, S-M-A-S, or the muscle lift type of lower face neck lift surgery. I've talked about skin only surgery, which is essentially abandoned these days. Very few people, if any, do it anymore. And the third one is the deep plane facelift. In specific regards to the deep plane facelift, the advantages again, you know, theoretically are that you have better blood supply because you're lifting up the muscle and the skin together and moving it all together as a unit, okay? Uh, you don't need to get into the weeds of technicality, but that's essentially an advantage. And if uh, surgeons feel comfortable doing it in that fashion to get in their hands a good, uh, good outcome, that's wonderful to do because you have to be well trained to do that because one disadvantage of doing this surgery uh, are actually two disadvantages of doing this surgery are that you don't have the differential movement of the deep muscle layer and the skin layer because they're all together. So if I separate them, I can move the muscle layer one way, I can move the skin a different way to get the outcome that I want because in deep plane, both of them move together more or less. Okay, and since you're deep to the muscle, the nerve fibers that go and move the face, you know, like move the face are, are there in, 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 in play essentially. And there's a slightly higher chance of injuring them. But of course, experienced surgeons who do this all the time are aware of this and they do it safely and they do it well. So the point of this is that if a surgeon is experienced and is good at what he or she does, and they're doing it for a long time and they get consistently good outcomes that are long term, it's wonderful to do any technique because it works well for them. In my case, I have done SMAS elevations for a long time. That's what I prefer for the reasons I just explained, which is that I don't feel that the nerves are in jeopardy. If there's no reason to put them in jeopardy, there's no reason to put them in jeopardy at all. Secondly, um, it's um, something where I get differential movement of the two planes that I talked about. And then the advantages or the outcomes I found to be, you know, similar or, or maybe sometimes better in the SMAS lift versus the deep plane, but it really depends on the surgeon. It's almost like a golfer, right? Some golfers are able to drive, you know, with their driver 350 yards and get on the green. Others can't. Uh, they don't want to take that risk. They'd rather lay it up close to the green and then take another club and go because they're more consistent that way. So, but both of them are trying to get on par or under par regardless, right? So it really depends. And so surgery is kind of like that. It's hard to standardize it. Everybody has a different degree of confidence level, different degree of expertise, different degree of comfort level, different degree of judgment, and all those play a role in what type of techniques are used and what is advised to the, to the patient. And so it's important to interview one or two or three surgeons so that you guys feel comfortable uh, of, of uh, whatever it is that you guys are looking for. So it's something I feel that everybody should know is that at the end of the day, surgery is personal. Surgery is very uh, intimate. And it's something that you know has to be done between a patient and a surgeon uh, who build a good relationship, a good trusting relationship where the surgeon is able to impart good information and able to explain it well and execute that well. And the patient really understands it and feels a trust and comfort with the surgeon. If uh, surgeons do deep plane, wonderful. If the surgeons do SMAS lift, wonderful. Just make sure that it's consistent, make sure it's reproducible, make sure it's safe, and make sure the surgeon is well trained to do either one. Okay, thank you so much.